What's up? Y'all, we have to talk about, we don't have to, but we're gonna. This guy. A lot of y'all may not have seen one of these little guys before, and uh, it looks like, a, looks like a lock, right? But it's actually a very interesting lock. This lock is used to secure drugs. And it's got a whole three pins in it. You might wonder why, or what, or how, or what in the heck. And that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna look at it. I'm gonna show it to you, because this thing comes up like once every five years. I've done it like, this will be the fifth time. So yeah, like once every five, six years, this dang stupid lock, not the same one, pops up. And we're gonna learn about it. Now, you might be asking yourself, self, or you might be asking Jason, Jason, why is there a three pin lock that secures drugs? This is used on shutters or gates, roll down, shutter, like, and anyway, it it's used to, to secure drugs, right? Uh, yeah. You would find this on pharmacies, and uh, and I'm not gonna like name the particular one, but it's a pretty common lock with pretty common keys with a whopping three pins in it. One, two, three, and it's actually a very unique lock because it's a double-sided lock, but it's only one cylinder. <laughs> How does it work? Well. Number one, it's on a roll down shutter gate, right? And, and you roll it down, you put the key in, you turn it, and you see the little bars go out. So there's little things that are connected to these. And then uh, they go obviously that way and that way. It's mounted on the gate, just like this, boop. And, uh, and yeah, when you, when you extend them, the bars go out. When you retract them, they pull in. And look at this. Did you notice that? Watch this. Oop. Okay. Doop. And then upside down. Look at that. Look at that. It is very odd to run across a lock like this. This is pretty much one of the only ones that I've, I've really ever seen like this. And uh, it's made by a... Uh, this one's messed up, actually. You saw the key didn't go all the way in there. That's not by design. This lock is actually uh, messed up. But if we look really close down in there, what is absolutely interesting about this lock, look at this. See how... See, that, that's normally like a really bad thing. And uh, in this lock, it, it's actually how it's supposed to be. So you got the pin chamber caps right there. All right, and then up here it's sealed. So what happens is you put the key in, and uh, the only way this is capable of working is it's just pushing the, the ramp of the bottom of the key there, is just pushing those down when it goes in. Now, of course, for this to operate correctly, number one, the key for it to go in either side, uh, which again, it's messed up, but let's see there. So, shoot, and then upside down. So you can lock it from the inside or outside, but again, we've got, got a little bit of issue there. Maybe maybe if we spray it, it'll, it'll help it, but I think we've got like, either like a wallet out pin chamber or something that's causing it, which is obviously why this is not still living on the gate. At some point in time, I took this off the gate and replaced it with a new one. But uh, yeah, the interesting thing about this, for a key to work from both sides, like this, in one cylinder, it has to be the exact same on the left and right. So look at that. It's exactly the same. If you look down, see those grooves are on the exact same side. And that's another reason why it's a three pin lock. Now there are not, believe it or not, even, even worse than the fact that it's a three pin lock, there's only that I know of, that I've discovered, that they have told me, the company that produces this, 
which there is a plaque on the gates, QMI roller shutters or whatever the case is, uh, QMI something, but uh, it's called the Lock C. Now, nowadays they make them with mortise cylinders. Thank goodness. These were an older design. I believe they do not make the gates like this with these locks anymore. They're all made different, but you still run into it. You still run into problems where, you know, that, and then they go and they, then they can't get the key to go in. So they need to replace it. Otherwise they have to replace the whole gate and they're not gonna wanna do that. Now, one thing I have discovered here recently, I just called to place a new order for one of these. We've got a customer that has one and it's the other key. So how these work for it to go in both sides, if we, if we see how the pins are closer on that side and then like further away. So on from this side of the key, it's only activating this one, this one, and this one. On this side, on the inside, this is the outside, this is the inside. So from the inside, it's got to reach all the way through to activate those almost get it to go uh but it's it's when it goes through from the inside it's activating from here here and here and then on this side of the lock it's activating with here here and here so what happens there is there's there's a very finite number of keys available for this lock and another interesting thing about this other than the fact that it's really easy uh to pick is is the one thing that you do have to do if you were having to open this would be to uh well let's let's so, say for instance let's see how this works there we go uh so they have uh from the inside they go and they lock it and then and then boom all of a sudden they're locked in so if you were a locksmith you'd have to come in and pick the lock However, one of the things about that, since those pins protrude up in the bottom, you can't just you can't just tension it like normal. You have to have a tension wrench that reaches all the way down through there, just like something like this would. You have to you'd have to press down on those pins before you uh, were able to unlock it. So, in this case, I don't actually even have one out there. Uh, that's long enough to reach through but we will just show you for instance let's say just make sure the key goes in and turns to the right so and uh, if we were on the outside and it for some reason you had to get into it just reach down and, and i'm going to use this longer leg this is just the longest leg one i have if i was actually coming in from this side i'd get a tension wrench with you know a longer longer leg and but you just have to just to make sure you push down on it as you go and you try to pick it, which obviously with three pins, it's not gonna be terribly difficult to do. I'm gonna say that and, and watch me not be able to pick it. There we go. So yeah, that is kind of the trick to opening it is if you were doing it from the inside, that leg has to be long enough to just kind of hold down those pins that are protruding up. Let's go ahead and take it apart so you can see uh, kind of what it looks like on the inside. We've talked about the fact that there are, there are only two. At the last time I ordered these, there were only two. They said, you, you've got two choices because somebody was missing keys for one. And uh, they said, well, there's two different keys for them. So you want to order both? And I was like, yeah, that's why I have this one left over uh, because I ordered both for a customer and the other one worked. But uh, uh, yeah, there is a, a very finite number of keys, that being two, because you have to have it a certain way. So it's just one, two, say like one, two, two, three. And you know, there's only like three depths. The other key is uh, like two, three, two. That way this over here is can't remember how it works but the other key is is set up so that either which way you turn you know either which way you put the key in there it turns and i just thought i would show this to you because i have to do it uh yet again yet again i have to 
order one of these. Now, the one thing that I just found out is the company, when I called to order it, uh, these are fairly expensive little mechanisms, and the company was like, hey, by the way, it's, uh, there's a uh, there's a $30 handling fee, which just pisses me off. Like, why is there a $30 handling fee? So there we can see how it works. It's a little gear through there, just like that. Doop. And then when you turn your key, it obviously turns turns the gear and, and makes them go in and out. So pretty simple right there. Let's take a little bit closer look at the cylinder itself. I am using an old broken screwdriver for this task, so that is not working out real well. But let's take a look at the cylinder itself. It does not come apart. Or I've never tried taking it apart. I guess we'll see real quick. Yep, it does come apart. Let's see. Ooh, hello. So maybe we can rekey this. I don't know. What's up? Oh, keys. Keys fell down. Ooh, we need to go find a plug follower. Okay, we found a plug follower, and it actually looks like it will fit. Boom. Three little bitty pins right there. Those do not look like regular size. They are not. They are a smaller diameter. Maybe, maybe, maybe best. Let's check best. Here we go. Let's check the diameter on best pins here. Nope. Even smaller diameter than than best pins. Well, hmm. Uh, so that is uh, just something that's going to cause a problem if you need to rekey it. But again, you can't rekey it to a whole lot of anything because it has to, you know, it has to actuate the pins from both sides. Let's take a look upstairs. Uh, this is going to be a little bit harder than normal, probably. Yep. Yep, yep. Ooh. Uh, okay. Oh, there goes that one. Shoot, I just heard it hit the ground. And that's not good because it's smaller diameter. So, there it goes. Look at that little bitty spring. Look at that. Is it a hollow? It is hollowed out. <laughs> Check out that little guy right there. So, that is how it is allowed to work on the bottom because there is not a whole lot of room. It just broke. All right, so I think uh, that may be one of the problems with this guy is, uh, yeah, the springs were jammed up. Two-sided, same chamfer on the up and down of the pin. And uh, a little hollow bottom pins. I don't think that upper one, let's check it. Yep, indeed, same way on the upper, it's, it's hollowed out. So, interesting pins for sure, and I think I can get this working again if I can find some springs that'll fit in that. I'm probably going to have to use automotive springs for it. So, I'm going to go ahead actually and take this guy apart. Boom. Dump all of them out. 
They're all... Are they the same size? No. Oh, no. Nope. They've actually got different size upper and lower. And I think I see our problem right here. If we look really close at that. See how it's kind of wobbled out on the on the edge right there so that is that pin is probably what was like jamming up i don't know if there's going to be a fix for that but we definitely have some broken springs that may have you know caused a problem too i'm just not sure how i'm going to reload this that's going to be an interesting thing to have to do but anyway i just thought i would show it to you i'm going to put all this back together and maybe maybe get it back working but this was used on a door really heavily so would not be something that i would be terribly excited about putting on for a customer comfortably even if i'm able to put springs and pins and all that because i think those pins i think those little hollow pins are deformed uh, and that's what causes the problem so anyway just in case you have never seen the three pin five pin three pin lock that's used to lock up drugs there you go that's how it works that's what it is if you ever get called out to uh to do a roll down shutter make sure and have them send you pictures because if you just schedule the job and go out there uh you're not going to be able to do anything you're not going to have the stuff with you more than likely uh to do anything you can buy key blanks obviously with small pins like that but but, you know, that's it's just so specialized. It's one of those things where it'd be better, like in this case, I'm just going to put this back together, use it for, you know, show and tell or whatever the case is. Order them a new one, even with the $30 handling fee, which is just stupid and ridiculous. But if you have any questions or comments on that little guy, I probably can't answer them very well, but I'll try. So post them in the comments section. Thanks for watching, y'all, and we'll catch you next video. It's it's dark. It's time for me to go home. See ya. I'm going to take a guess that many of you are wondering how I would get it back together since there's pins in line with each other.